open your Bibles again now to 2 Timothy chapter 2. We're continuing our series that is entitled Gifts and Callings. We're talking about the gift of God, the calling of God that is upon each and every one of our lives. We're looking particularly today at the focus of how do we approach the call. How do we approach the call of God that is on our lives? One of the questions... <clears throat> excuse me, that I'm often asked is in relationship to how did I know I was called? Uh, what happened that would bring about me knowing that God's call was on my life? I do not have a story of there being an epiphany or a light that shined in the room or anything to that effect. There are people who have that story, and I'm grateful for the testimony that the Lord gives you in that regards. That, that is not particularly my testimony. Um, however, it does not take away from the fact that God's call upon my life did come with some dramatics. Uh, I do suggest that any of us that are called of God, and truth be told, all of you have been called of God. It has its element of challenge. It has its element of formation that is not always pleasant. God uses even the rough things of life to help shape us into being, though marred, an image of his glory, an image and a testimony and a witness of how good he is. For me, you've heard me tell many times how I was born to parents who were told that uh, after uh, my mother had two uh, miscarriages and the third child that she had was a stillborn. She had three pregnancies two miscarriages, and the third child, his name was Stanley, was a uh, stillborn in Montgomery, Alabama. And the doctors then told my parents that th after that they would not have any children, that my mother was not able to conceive, and therefore they would not have children. And uh, as it were, <laughs> five years later, surprise, surprise, surprise. <laughs> The doctor said that you are with child. I was born uh, prematurely, weighing two pounds and no ounces. And back then, even today, that is a challenge for an infant, a child that is born that small. You see? Yeah, thank you. Praise God. If ain't nobody happy, I'm glad you're happy about it. Because I sure am. Hey, Amen. That's right. Sis going to help me right there. And it's true, I, I, I weighed two pounds and no ounces, and the doctor said that there's no way that this baby will thrive. Don't get your hopes up. And, uh, and if he lives, he will be so underdeveloped that there would be no way that he would be able to thrive in life. Later, they will tell my parents he will not live to be age 15 because everything is out of order, everything is misaligned, etc. cetera. And uh, as it were, God used a woman who believed God, that did not give up. And she came to the hospital every day for nearly four months, putting her hands in the incubator. And I still was not thriving, wasn't growing, but she kept putting her hands on me and saying, Lord, if you take my baby and raise him up and heal him, he will grow to be a man of God. And he will tell the people of the things you have done. And God touched me, even to the point that even at the age of seven, it seemed as though that what the doctors had said was actually taking place, that I was not going to live. I actually stopped breathing in my mother's arms right there in North Sacramento over on, Fel on Felden Street, Belden Street, on Belden. And I stopped breathing, and she had called the ambulance and my dad was at work at McClellan Air Force Base, and she called the ambulance, and the ambulance was on their way, and I wasn't breathing. And she took her hand and put it on my chest. And when she put it on my chest, she said, Lord, you promise. You promise that if I gave this child over to you, that you would touch him and heal him. He would preach the gospel and do the work of the Lord. And the minute she touched me, I took a deep breath, and breath came into my body. At the age of seven, I gasped for breath, 
and opened my eyes, and I remember to this day saying, I'm hungry. I want some chicken. <laughs> I've been eating chicken ever since. Come on, y'all. Can't, can't give it up. So when you see me praising like you saw me a moment ago, I have a lot to praise him for. I really do, children. I have so much to praise him for. He's kept his promises. The fact that I'm standing before you this very moment, God's hand and his promises are true. Amen? Amen. And it's with not only myself, but you must understand, dear ones, that when we speak of the call, Although I had individuals in my life, I can name them to you. I can name people to you. These, these windows that you see around this room, if you notice, there are little placards underneath those windows. And they have names of people that have long gone from the face of this earth. But these were men and women who spoke over me even as a child. And said, the call of God is on this child. A woman by the name of Myrtle White, Mother Myrtle White. I remember going to her house over there on 19th Avenue and walking in her house as a little boy. And she looked at me and she told my mother and father, God's got his hand on him. Guard the anointing that is on this child's life. God's got his hand on him. See, I believe, and I'm going to tell some of you all that have little children, I believe it's something powerful when you take your children and walk to an elder and say, put your hand on my child and let the elders prophesy over your children. They can be 10 years old. Bring them over to some of these church mothers and some of these elders and pastors and let them just touch them and just encourage them and speak over them. That spoke over me. A woman by the name of Dr. Esther Nelson at American River College, the first African-American counselor at American River College. She looked at me. I told you this last week. She looked at me. She said, young Lovelace, just out, fresh out of high school, young Lovelace, I don't want you to hang out in the quad. I need you in the library. God's got a work for you to do. And then she was wise enough, and another woman, uh, Dr. Beverly Benton, who spoke over me and said these words, you're not just to go to school and get a degree in theology, but also get a degree in social work and social science so that your skill in ministry is sharpened. You understand people and you don't just approach people any kind of a way. You know how to talk to them and let them present what the challenge is. These were people who spoke over me. You have people around you every day who are dropping nuggets, nuggets of encouragement. Don't be so fearful and insecure that you dismiss when people are saying things to you. There are people who are saying things and you have talked yourself into believing. There's no way I can do this because of this or I can't do this because of that. You must silence anything that negates the promises of God that are over your life. Please tell somebody the voice of God is stronger. In the passage of 2 Timothy chapter 2, notice here, Paul goes to this young man and he speaks to Timothy in a very parental way. We've been studying this for weeks. Pastor Jeff led us out in it and I followed behind him and we found out that this man, Timothy, is a young follower of Paul. His name means to honor God or God honoring but he, like many of us, is challenged with timidity and fear, even to the place that the apostle has to remind him and tell him specifically, God is not giving you a spirit of fear, because fear is a spirit. 
It can dwell with you unknowingly. It can, watch this, fear for some of us has become a familiar spirit. Right at the point that you have confidence to step out and to move forward on something, the spirit that is familiar with just what to do, what to say, what circumstances to present will cause you to renege and pull back and draw back and put you on delay. But you must realize, children, that you are not on your timing. You're on God's timing. There's some things that God's going to have to do because you're just now playing catch up. And you're realizing there's something I should have been on about five years ago. I'm tired of other folks getting my idea. I'm tired of writing stuff down and dreaming about it and then hearing about it and knowing that that's something that God had put in my spirit. But I was afraid. I, I allowed myself to get all types of wording in my narrative that began to talk myself out of it, and it put me on delay. But I came to encourage somebody that finds yourself in that position. The moment you say yes to God, we serve a Lord that is able to go and take time lost and bring it forward as to redeem the time and to restore what the adversary seemingly has taken from you. I feel a praise in my spirit right there. There, That's to encourage somebody. My child, my child, Paul says, my child, my child. He doesn't even call him man of God. He doesn't even call him servant of God. He, he, he makes this relational so that he can input, impart into him. He is a man of God. He is a servant of God. But as my child, I, I bring you close to me, and I want you to be strengthened by the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Here's the point. Where you're going and whatever God calls you to do, children, you can't do it in your own ability and your own strength. It will take God working in you to bring you into this next season of your life. Every one of you have been called ED. But here's the point. You are also being called. I was called, but there's something that God is calling me to. I've been saved for years, but there's still something he's calling me to. I've, I've been ministering and doing this and doing that for the Lord, but there's still something on my life that he's calling me to. In other words, I cannot get settled and think this is it. Uh, you, you've got something that God is doing, but just because the job came through, don't lock in. You, you got the house. That's beautiful. But don't get settled and get locked in. You, you got blessed with the husband, the wife, and he blessed you with the babies, but don't get locked in. There, there's more that God wants to do I need you to tell somebody he's calling me to something. He's, he's calling me. He's calling me. Uh, he's calling me. The, the reason why I keep waking up at 3 o'clock in the morning, he, he's calling me to something. He, the, the, even at times I want to throw in the towel and, and try to give up. The, the Holy Spirit in me won't allow me to give up. I, I keep having this push in my back. Telling me, son, just walk with me. There's doors I'm ready to open. There's things I want to show you. But it won't be by power. It won't be by your might. But it will be by my spirit. 
working on the inside of you. My child, my child, my child, my child, my child, my child, my child. Be strengthened by the grace that is in Christ Jesus. The grace. Be strengthened by the grace. Remember, we've been defining this forever with you all. I hope you've gotten it. That grace is all of God's ability that is directed towards you through you, and towards others. When the scripture says his grace is sufficient, it doesn't mean it'll just do. His grace means all of his ability, all of his power, that truly we ourselves could not muster up. Not based upon where you go to church, not based upon how well you can read the scriptures, not based upon how all the things that you do. Anything that we do is predicated upon God's power in us. When you go to work, it's God's power in you. You walk in that classroom, it's God's power in you. When you walk in your neighborhood, it's God's power in you. All of God's ability, working towards you, through you, and towards others. He says we're strengthened by it. We're strengthened by it. We're strengthened by it. It's very important that you know his grace is strengthening you today. His strength, his grace is strengthening you today. Someone asked me the other day, and they asked me this a lot, how are you able to do all that you do and how are you able to lead and do all the things that you're doing? And I have to tell them, don't get it twisted. It ain't me. It is not me. It is the grace of God, his power that is extended towards my life. Someone's looking at you raising your children and going to work and still coming home and cooking the food and making sure everybody's taken care of. How are you able to do it? Now, make sure you let them know. Don't give me the credit. Don't, don't look at me as though it's me. It is nothing but the grace of God that is helping me to raise my children and to put food on the table and not lose my mind and not get confused and not want to give up and not want to throw in the towel. It is his grace that is strengthening me. That's why I touch three people and say, please pray, pray for me, pray for me, pray for me. And when I say pray for me, when I say pray for me, I don't say that as though I have a sad story to tell. You missed it. I'm not asking you to pray for me because I got an old me, woe me story to tell. I'm asking you to pray that I continue to be a vessel. On the, come on, y'all. A conduit of the Holy Spirit operating as the hands, the mouth, the eyes, the ears of Christ. Pray I don't get in my own way. Please pray I don't get in my own way. Pray I don't mess this up with my crazy thinking. Pray I don't mess this up with my foolish talk. Pray I don't mess this up, getting tied up with the wrong conversation and the wrong people. Pray I don't mess this up, sharing a God vision with people who don't know how to handle it. Be strengthened by the grace of God. And then he tells us, and this is what I want you to do. I want you, what you've heard from me in the presence of a whole lot of folk, you were sitting in church when this came out. I want you to take what you heard and entrust it to faithful people. Can I tell you something, children? You must in this point, at this point of where you're going in your life, you must only be willing to invest in folks that want to be helped. Amen. 
You need to find out, do you want the help? And if you want me to help you, I'd love to deposit what has been given to me into you. But you have to be careful because some of you are allowing folks who don't want your help to drain you. You have talked your lips off your mouth. Your lips have run across the table, bounced off the wall and back onto your face. I'm going to turn you on to something. I'm going to really turn you on to something. There's a couple of folks here. There are some folks, first of all, three types. First of all, they don't want to be helped in general. They really don't. You ever talk to somebody and they come to you and they tell you what's going on and you give them feedback and they turn around and they over talk you and tell you, well, I feel in such and such. And so, and I, now you called me. You called me. You woke me up at 11 o'clock at night out of my good sleep. And I'm telling you what the Lord wants you to do and how you got to walk through this. And you still going to sit there and tell me, well, I just don't feel. Don't call me no more. Don't call me no more. Don't, don't call me no more. Some folk don't want to be helped in general. And there's some folk, secondly, they don't want your help specifically. You the one confused. They ain't confused. They don't want your help. And then there's a third group. They don't even want to help themselves. So you must be careful, we must be careful if you're to pursue the call of God that is on your life as you approach that call, know that God wants you to invest it in people who will receive it and they will take what has been deposited into them and they will pour it into someone else. <laughs> Amen. Got to understand that, children. So he says, invest, invest in, in, in to entrust it into faithful people who will be able to teach others also. Share in the suffering as good soldiers who don't get entangled with civilian pursuits and be like the athlete who is not crowned unless she competes according to the rules and like the hardworking farmer who ought to eat the first share of the crop. See, he lays it out for us. He says that the way of the call it's going to cost you. There's some suffering that comes with this. I know we don't like to talk about it in church because you've heard somebody preach to you and tell you that the believers ought not to suffer anything. But, beloved, if you're going to be a Christ follower, you must deny yourself, take up your cross daily, and be willing to follow the Lord. And there's some things that aren't going to feel good to you. There's some things that's going to hurt you to your core. But because of the call of God that is on your life, even what hurts is not to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed as you are obedient to what God has called you to do. I'd rather suffer for righteousness sake than to suffer for disobedience. If I'm going to go through something, I want to go through because I'm doing what is honorable before the Lord. I don't want to go through because I'm disobedient to God. Whatever I go through, I want to go through because it is my aim to stand before him and hear him say, well done, good and faithful servant. Hear me in this, children. We are called to go through whatever we go through, but it's not to be compared to what God will reveal. There shall be glory after this. 
I need you to prophesy to someone around you and tell them whatever is happening now is not to be compared to what's going to be revealed. Go ahead and tell them that. Whatever is happening. Come on. Something is going to be revealed. Yes, it's a struggle right now. But something is going to be revealed, sis. It's, it's, going, it's going to be made real clear. If you can just hold out. If you can just walk through the battle now. Walk through the storm now. Tell your neighbor, it's going to open up. It's going to reveal. It's going to show itself. My God. Joy's going to come. I, I feel like shouting. I said, I feel like shouting. I don't know who that was for. But children, I'm telling you, don't you be weary in well-doing. In due season, you're going to reap this thing if you don't faint. Don't throw in the towel. Hold on. Hold on. It's about to shine in a minute here. Grab somebody's hand and say, just walk with me through the dark. Come on, say, just walk through me through the issue, through the problem. If you can suffer with me, you're going to be able to rejoice with me. If you're willing to hang with me in the middle of all of this mess, we're going to shout. Somebody. <laughs> Sit down, children. Oh, hallelujah. I'm trying my best to get to them little notes. <laughs> this inside your bulletin. I really am. Don't look like it's going to happen today. I'll have to do them little notes next week. But I'm here to tell you right now, you ought to have a, I mean, just a Holy Ghost tenacity about you. Don't play with it. Grab somebody by the hand and tell them, I declare that God's calling on your life, God's purpose is on your life, and nothing can stop what God is going to do in you, through you, for you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And a devil in hell can stop what God has released in you. I command every spirit of discouragement, every stronghold that has tried to come on you within the last 30 days, in the name of Jesus, I call it off of you. I declare and decree God's hand is on your life. God's hand is on your life. God's head is on your life. Give him praise. Shut up. 
children. I need you to be good soldiers. I need you to be good soldiers. Discipline yourself. Discipline your talk, your walk. Tell your neighbor, say, I'm only wearing one uniform today. And it's not depression. And it's not fear. And it's not confusion. And it's not codependency. And it's not enabling folks. I'm only wearing one uniform today. I'm going to put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise is in my mouth. Come on, smile at somebody say, I know we ain't acting right. Come on, tell them, I know we ain't acting right. Tell them I ain't trying to act right. Tell them I'm trying to act like I got calling on my life. I'm acting like I got purpose on my life. I'm acting like I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. I'm acting like every place I put my foot, God is moving by his anointing. I am taking back ground. I'm taking back ground in my family. I'm taking back ground in my children. I'm taking back ground on my job. Tell your neighbor, say, take a step. In every place you put your foot, take back ground. Be a good soldier. Fight the good fight of faith. Keep fighting. Keep fighting. Put the whole armor of God on. Discipline yourself. As an athlete, stay and follow the rules. Hang with other athletes. You remember how it was when you were in school, the athletes hung out together? You remember how you sit in the cafeteria and you remember the athletes came in? They had their food, their table, and they came in and stepping. They couldn't hang with us. They were in training. They're in development. Come on, y'all ain't hear what I'm saying. I can't hang with riffraff. I can't hang with tired folks. I can't hang with folks that ain't got no vision. I can't hang with folk want to be religious. I can't hang with folk that are trying to live in yesterday. Ah, today is the day the Lord has made. I will with and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, are you an athlete? Because tell him I'm in training. Come on, tell him I'm in training. And I only need athletes around me. Tell him I need somebody that will get into the gym of life and help spot me while I'm lifting this weight. Don't let the weight crush me, but reach over and lift the weight. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, spot me. Neighbor, help lift the weight. Say it, say it, say it. Lift. If you see me talking crazy, lift. If you see me getting tired a little bit, lift. If you see me struggling, don't talk about me. Don't tell the church on me, but pray for me. Pray that God will lift me up and take me through. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, lift. I gotta go. I gotta go. I gotta go. I got one more thing for you. You gotta be like a good farmer. You gotta be a hard-working farmer. Y'all missed it. You gotta be a hard-working farmer. Tell your neighbor you gotta be a hard-working farmer. We never promised it was gonna be easy. 
This is going to be some work. Now, you're not working to get saved. But because you are saved, it's going to be some work. Because you're fighting against some principalities. You're fighting against some familiar spirits. You're fighting against some demonic forces. But tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, don't stress too hard. You've got the name of Jesus and the blood of Jesus. All you have to do is call that name. Speak that name. Demons tremble at the name of Jesus. When you call that name, God delivers. When you call that name, God heals. When you call that name, God sets free. What's his name? What's his name? What's his name? Hey! got to be a good farmer. Got to be a good farmer. It's going to be some work. But did you catch this? He says, the farmer, the hard-working farmer, the hard-working farmer, the one who puts some backbone in it, the hard-working farmer gets to eat of the first crop. I'm going to just break it down and I got to go. That sounds like favor to me. Yesterday, I get to the car shop, car wash, get my car wash. I'm driving up. Everybody's sitting there on Saturday. Place is packed. Packed. Everybody's sitting there mad. Looking doom and gloom. It was cloudy outside, and it was cloudy in them spirits. I walked by 10, 15 folks sitting at their lip poked out. I got out of my car. Now, I didn't want to be there no hour and a half myself. But I know God has called me to that car wash. You're going to find out in a minute. I'm called to that car wash. There's an anointing that's on me for that car wash. I pass a whole lot of car washes, but I go to that one across town because God's called me there. So I get out, everybody looking mad. I walk up past about 10, 15 of them, and instead of, watch this, pulling the spirit of the environment into me, Instead of assimilating, instead of being conformed to the things of this world, but understanding I've been transformed by the renewing of my mind. I walked past the people. And I did, just like this. They all sitting there looking sad and mad. Didn't know them. I walked by. I said, good morning. Good morning. A couple of folks on the other side. Good morning to all to whom I've not spoken. The owner's little grand- grandbaby. Little grandbaby come running out. And I said, look it, look, Grandma, come here, mijo. I put my little hand on his head. Lord, bless his little hard head in the name of Jesus. And I, <laughs> and I'm standing in line to pay for my car wash, 10 folks deep on the inside. And the lady who's taking the money, she leans over looking past the 10 folks. And she says, watch this, watch this, Bishop. Full wash? I said, yes, ma'am. I got you. In other words, go and sit yourself down. You even going to be ahead of these other 10 that haven't even paid for theirs yet. But I got you. 
Now watch this, watch this. I go standing outside and all of the people washing their cars, about eight of them, they come running out. I kid you not, they are dropping hoses and dropping sponges and dropping rags, leaving cars, slowing things down to come over and say, Bishop, good to see you. Good, to, good morning, Bishop. Good morning, Bishop. Good morning. Now, I would admit the fact that I bought a whole, all of them, KFC chicken two weeks ago, that might have contributed to it. You know God works in the spiritual and the natural. I got to go. Here's how it works. They've been, watch this, they've been getting me for the last three years. I have yet to be charged for a car wash. You understand? But here's the point. If you're going to pursue your call, you understand that God does not bless you to take shortcuts. When he gives you favor, is so that the blessing you have received, you can go and help bless somebody else. So, although I don't pay $25 to get my car washed, whoever washes my car gets a $25 tip. Y'all ain't seeing what I'm trying to tell you. He will give you favor so that you may eat of the fruit, but don't eat all of the fruit. <laughs> give the fruit and honor God first and say, Lord, this is what you have done. And then bless others. We got to go. I wish I didn't have to go, but I got to preach at three. Stand to your feet and give God a high praise and bless his name. Come on, give him praise. Pastors, ministers, come. Pastors and ministers, come. Oh, have you been blessed today, children? Tell somebody you got a call of God on your life. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. God's going to use you. All you got to do is understand where your strength comes from. It's the grace of God. Children, you're going to go through some things. But be good soldiers. Hang out with the athletes. You're on a winning team. Hallelujah. I say you're on a winning team. And I just again decree and declare just favor all in your life. Ah, everything you touch, may it prosper in the name of Jesus. Stay humble before the Lord. Stay humble before the Lord. Stay sweet. Be kind-hearted to everyone. Love people. Care for people. Hallelujah. Stop being so hard even on yourself. Stop being hard on yourself. God has purposed you for such a time as this. I'm so glad he didn't cause me to be born in 1840 or 1790. God said no. On March 29, 1962, I will cause this baby to be born because he knew that you and I would have a divine destiny and we would collide with each other for the sake of purpose. So there's absolutely nothing that has happened, nothing that is happening, or nothing that shall happen that is able to remove me out of the purposes of God for my life. Everything has developed, been divinely ordered. I shall not lament. I shall not be saddened, but I shall rejoice in the Lord. Every day, I'll take a deep breath, deep within my lungs, to remind me 
I'm not merely existing. I'm alive. I'm alive. I'm alive. Stay encouraged. I'll spot you. You spot me. Come on now. If you see me holding that weight, no bathroom break. I need you over me so that if it gets hard, you'll help lift it off. And I promise you, I'll keep my hand on the weight. I won't turn around and say, you got it. (laughs) I'll suffer along with it until the storm has passed over. Jesus, keep your hands on these babies. Keep your hands on these, your darlings. Lord, the weathering of the storm has not brought them to a place of utter despair. Thank you. Something good is going to happen. I know it. So help my darlings, God, to walk strong in the Lord. When they leave out of here, let them catch everything, every bird singing, every sun ray Every cloud that's moving, every leaf that's fluttering, God, help them to catch it. And let it be a revelation to them, Lord. Ah, God, you've got me. Let them hear the voice just like I heard in that car wash. I got you. And let them, God, rest knowing that all is well. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. 